Good morning, everyone. Bonjour à tous. Before I get started, I want to take a moment to recognize that this will be an incredibly difficult weekend for many people across Nova Scotia. To everyone who lost someone and to the entire community, know that Canadians are holding you in our hearts. Aujourd'hui, je vais vous parler des mesures de santé publique, des vaccins et du soutien offert aux Canadiens. Commençons d'abord avec la santé publique. Canada continues to face an incredibly serious situation with this third wave. Cases are rising rapidly. In many cases, in many places, numbers are higher than they've ever been before, and far too many hospitals are stretched way too thin. In Toronto in particular, numbers are breaking record after record, as, and ICU hospital beds are filling up. There's no doubt that Canada's largest city is struggling under the weight of this third wave, so we're going to do whatever it takes to help. On vaccination in particular, Ontario has reached out for more support. I can tell you today that we are standing by to deploy the Canadian Red Cross to help with their mobile vaccination teams. This is about getting doses to people where the situation is most serious. And we'll also continue to help on a whole range of other fronts, too. Discussions are ongoing about extra health care providers, and we are ready to step up. We're also, we've also already deployed mobile health units that set up more hospital beds in Toronto and Hamilton. For Ontario, we've shipped out more health care equipment, like oxygen units and drugs to treat COVID-19. We have approved a request to have the Canadian Red Cross deployed in up to 27 long-term care homes as needed. We're supporting safe isolation sites everywhere from Toronto to Peel to Thunder Bay. And we have deployed 300 contact tracers doing thousands of calls a day for Ontario and lab support, which has already processed over 15,000 samples so far. Yesterday, I spoke with Mayor Crombie of Mississauga, Mayor Tory of Toronto, and Mayor Brown of Brampton. We talked about what's going on in the GTA and what that means for hospitals, schools, and small businesses. We also talked about the fact that this is a moment when we all have to work together to flatten the curve while getting vaccines into arms as quickly as possible. Earlier this morning, I also spoke with Mayor Scarpitti of Markham. I told him what I told the other mayors last night, that our government is here to help. And that's true for every community in Canada. No matter where you live, know that we have your back. We're supporting COVID-19 testing for people in BC, Alberta and Manitoba through mobile labs that can reach more patients. We're providing help on isolation sites in places like Nova Scotia and Saskatchewan to stop cases spreading. And across the country, we've stepped up with money for school safety, shipped out PPE, and of course, delivered vaccines. The frontline workers, people working in hospitals, those they're caring for, and their families, know that we have your backs, even as you have ours. You've been heroes throughout this pandemic, stepping forward to help all Canadians, we recognize that. We continue to be there for you. You don't have to face this alone. We will support you and your families as you keep us all safe. Thank you for what you're doing. And to all Canadians, I know you're exhausted. I know you're all sick and tired of COVID-19. I know nobody wants to be in this third wave. Nobody wants to be facing further restrictions. We just want to be done with this. But we know how to do what we need to do. We need to follow the public health rules. We need to hang in there and hunker down for a number of more weeks. Nobody wants to do this. I got in an argument with my 13-year-old this morning who doesn't want to do this. Nobody wants to do this. But we know that if we hang in there, hunker down, and follow the rules for the coming weeks, as much as we're tired of them, as much as we're frustrated, 
we have a chance of getting to the summer in much better shape. This is a moment for us to dig deep at what is hopefully the very late stages of this pandemic for us all and make it through. It's time to show our neighbors and our loved ones what we're all made of as we keep people safe. La semaine passée, j'ai répété au premier ministre des provinces et territoires qu'on est prêt à leur offrir tout le soutien nécessaire. On traverse actuellement une période très grave de cette crise. C'est important qu'on continue de travailler en équipe parce qu'ensemble, on va passer à travers. On vaccines, while we, like many other countries, have been impacted by manufacturing challenges at Moderna's European facility, this morning, I have some very good news to share about Pfizer. Canada has now signed an agreement with Pfizer for 8 million more doses of the vaccine. This is on top of what we have already purchased. I want to thank everyone at Pfizer for their cooperation and hard work, not, to just, not just to keep deliveries on schedule, but to move more doses up and reach new agreements. With the New Deal, Canada will receive 4 million additional Pfizer doses in May, another 2 million in June, and 2 million more in July. For next month alone, this will come out to about double the Pfizer doses we were originally expecting. All told, we'll be receiving 8 million doses in May and almost 12 million in June from Pfizer alone. Now that's a lot of numbers, so here's the bottom line. More doses arriving sooner means more people getting their vaccines faster. And that means more people who are safer and more families that can breathe a sigh of relief. Le Canada a maintenant conclu une entente avec Pfizer pour obtenir 8 millions de doses supplémentaires qui s'ajoutent à celles que nous avions déjà achetées. Grâce à cette entente, on va recevoir 4 millions de doses supplémentaires au mois de mai, 2 millions de doses supplémentaires en juin et 2 millions de doses supplémentaires en juillet. En résumé, ça veut dire qu'on va recevoir environ deux fois plus de doses de vaccin de Pfizer que prévu pour le mois de mai et des millions de plus en juin. On travaille sans relâche pour que chaque Canadien puisse se faire vacciner le plus tôt possible. Je sais que bien des gens, particulièrement des jeunes, attendent patiemment leur tour pour que leurs grands-parents, leurs parents et les travailleurs de première ligne puissent se faire vacciner en premier. Merci et tenez bon. Vous allez recevoir vos doses bientôt. On est en bonne voie pour vacciner complètement tous ceux qui le souhaitent d'ici la fin septembre. Je sais que ce printemps a été difficile, mais l'été et l'automne seront meilleurs si on tient bon et surtout, si on suit les règles de la santé publique. Remember that this won't last forever. There's every reason to believe that we're now in the final, although toughest, stretch of this pandemic. This is not the moment to let up, not even for a second. So no matter where you live, keep your distance, wear a mask, stay home whenever possible, wash your hands, download and use the COVID Alert app, and be sure to follow local public health guidelines. Hang in there a little longer because we're going to get through this. C'est tout à fait normal de ressentir de l'anxiété ou du stress en ce moment. Vous n'êtes pas seul. Votre santé mentale est importante et il y a des gens qui peuvent vous aider. Si vous éprouvez des difficultés, n'hésitez pas à demander de l'aide. Il y a un an, on a lancé le portail en ligne Espace Mieux-être Canada. Le site Web offre un soutien gratuit et confidentiel en matière de santé mentale et de consommation de substances, 24 heures sur 24, 7 jours sur 7. En un an, plus de 1,2 million de personnes d'un bout à l'autre du pays ont utilisé cette ressource. Il n'y a pas de honte à avoir besoin de parler à quelqu'un ou de demander de l'aide. Alors que vous soyez à la recherche de conseils, de ressources, de renseignements fiables ou d'un soutien immédiat, vous pouvez toujours vous rendre sur le site de l'Espace Mieux-être Canada pour trouver de l'aide. 
whether on vaccines, healthcare resources, or mental health support, we're focused on what you and your family need to get through this crisis. On that note, this Monday, we will be releasing our 2021 federal budget. In the last few days, I've had meetings with all of the party leaders to discuss that budget. As I said to each of them, it's vital that we work together right now. This is especially true on measures that are about helping you get through this pandemic, whether you're a parent, a student, a small business owner, or a senior. On aura plus de renseignements à vous fournir lundi prochain au sujet du plan qu'on met en œuvre pour assurer la sécurité des Canadiens, créer des emplois pour la classe moyenne et rebâtir une économie propre et résiliente. Mais pour l'instant, je veux simplement vous dire ceci. L'ensemble des mesures prévues dans ce budget ont pour but de, principal de vous aider à traverser cette crise et de rebâtir un Canada plus fort pour tous. And finally, I just spoke with Her Majesty the Queen to extend my deepest condolences and the condolences of all Canadians on the passing of His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh. She expressed to me how touched she was by the tributes that have been flowing in from Canada and around the world uh, for Prince Philip. And she highlighted and remembered for me all the fond memories she holds of trips to Canada with him over the past many decades. Prince Philip's legacy of service will be long remembered here in Canada, especially in his work to empower young people. Merci tout le monde. Thank you.